الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وكفى والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحاب جمعين ومن سن سنته واهتدى بهده لا يوم الدين ما بعد وعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم my, my dear and respected brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh My dear brothers and sisters in these two ayahs which I recited to you just now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us few things <coughs> Number one is that Ya Yuhalina Amanu Ittaqullah. O those people who believe, fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ittaqullah, fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second is Waqulu Kawlan Sadida. Second is that whenever you speak, always speak what is true. Speak only the truth. Then Allah said, يُسْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ If you have these two things, and that is that you have the fear of Allah's punishment, and you speak nothing but truth in your life. Allah said, two things will happen, one in this world and the other in the life hereafter. What will happen in this world is, يُسْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ Which in easy English it would be that your life in this world, would be full of peace and tranquility. Second thing which will happen to you in the life hereafter is وَيَغْفِلَّكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ That Allah will forgive your sins. Then Allah says وَمَنْ يُتِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَعَدَ فَوْدًا عَظِيمًا And remember that whoever follows Allah and His Rasul, he will be successful in this world and he will be successful in the life hereafter. Therefore, my dear brother and sister, let's turn our attention to these two things. First is what? What is the first, first commandment? Ittaqullah. Ittaqullah. And what is the second one, brothers and sisters? What is the second one? Waqulu qawlan sadida. Right? Speak the truth. Speak the truth. These two commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is giving us guarantees that two things will happen to you. If you will follow these two commandments of Allah. One is what? The life in this world will be full of happiness and peace to you. Right? And what will happen in the second one? وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive your, your, your sins. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a... Uh, Commandment which is the basis of all commandments of Allah and that is وَمَنْ يُتِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَاذَ فَوْضًا عَظِيمًا Remember whoever obeys Allah and His Rasul, he will be successful in this world and in the life after. Therefore my dear brothers and sisters, let's <coughs> turn our attention to the first commandment of Allah and that is إِتَّقُوا اللَّهُ all, all those people who believe, fear Allah. Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about fear Allah in Quran, it means that fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't have to fear Allah, but you have to fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if I will do wrong, the punishment, the punishment of Allah could be very severe for me. So I think fear that punishment. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, fear the fire of hell. Right? Similarly, fear the punishment of Allah that could come to you because of your sins in this world. Therefore, taqwa. Taqwa is translated as piety. That you should be pious. And piousness means that do not break the hudud of Allah, the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So, 
fear the punishment of Allah, lead a pious life. And remember, my dear brothers and sisters, the piety or taqwa is the main element if you want your good deeds to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I give you a scenario, right? You are praying salah. Just like let's say you will pray Juma Salah right now, right? What is the uh, guarantee that Allah is going to accept our Juma Salah? Right? What is the guarantee? How can we be guaranteed that Allah is going to accept Juma Salah? And let's say when the donation box will be in, in motion, you will put some donation as well. What is the guarantee that this donation will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right? Okay, after salah, we all make dua to Allah. What is the guarantee that this dua which we'll make right after Juma salah is going to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is the guarantee? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us what, how our deeds could be accepted by Allah. Allah said, I have only one uh, criteria. That if you want your good deeds to be accepted, Allah said, Innama yataqabbalullahu minal muttaqeen. Innama yataqabbalullahu minal muttaqeen. Allah said, I accept good deeds only from muttaqees. People who have taqwa. You have taqwa, your deeds will be accepted by Allah. You don't have taqwa, no matter how many good deeds you do in your life, it will never be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, innama yataqabbalullahu minal muttaqeen. Not from, from fasiqeen, from kadibeen. No. Allah said, no. My criteria is that you pray two rakahs of salah. You give one dollar, not million dollars, just one dollar. But if you have taqwa, piety, then rest be assured that you, your good deed will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If no taqwa, then you can go to Haram of Makkah, you can go to Haram of Medina, you can go to Baitul Baghdad in Jerusalem, no matter what, where you go. But if you have, don't have taqwa, then Allah said, no, you don't fit my criteria. So you will not, your deeds will not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, taqwa is the most important element. And for taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ala inna awliya Allah la khafun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun. Alladheena amanu wa kanu yattaqun. Allah said, my friends, awliya Allah, means friends, right? Like you see a pious person, a sheikh, a very pious person, you say what? He is Waliullah. Right? Wali means friend. He is a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you know, how can you be, how can each one of you become my, my friend? And how can you also can become a friend of Allah? Waliullah. Allah said, Alladina amanu wa kanu yattaqun. Two things. Bring iman upon Allah and Rasul. And, and have taqwa in your life. That's it. Iman, which Alhamdulillah we all have. But what is missing from the life of most of us, illa mashallah, is taqwa. Right? That we don't fear the punishment of Allah. Right? <coughs> when we don't fear the punishment of Allah, so we make sins and we make sins repeatedly. Like a certain sin that we, that we made in the past, we repeat it again. So we are doing sins repeatedly, intentionally. Right? And this is because we don't fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that because you don't fear punishment of, of Allah, so you are making sins. So meaning you, you, you don't have taqwa. You don't have taqwa. So you don't have taqwa, sorry. You can pray as much as you want, but I will not accept. Right? You can donate as much as you want, Allah will not accept. 
first meet the criteria and that is taqwa you see now just like in us or elsewhere in the world let's say you are a doctor and you did your medicine in your country from wherever you are coming from you did mbbs you did md you are a full fledged doctor there licensed to practice in your country now you got migration to us you came to us right now can you just open up a clinic and start writing uh, prescriptions no here there are set of rules that say well you don't meet our criteria in us we have to do certain exams right go through certain rules follow those rules then you will fit their criteria then they will give you a license then you practice then you write a prescription and it will be accepted <coughs> similarly my dear brothers and sisters if we have taqwa right you make two rakat of salah and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept but if you don't meet the criteria of allah you say i have iman la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah i have iman i am a muslim allah said fine you are a muslim but because of your continuous sins you don't meet my criteria so your deeds will not be accepted therefore my dear brothers and sisters what we need to do uh, know is that we must fear the punishment from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you really if or of we all really fear the punishment from allah we will not make repeatedly deliberate sins right remember my dear brothers and sisters in the world the the most challenging thing for a believer is to abstain from sins doing good deeds is is not a challenge doing good deeds is easy but abstaining from sins that's the biggest challenge for you coming to the masjid for example for juma salah is easy but for the rest of the day abstaining from sins that's a, a big challenge right and these sins start with what with misuse of your eyes right and then it continues from all kind of all forms of sins so you came for juma salah it is easy for you to 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 come and pray but then once you leave the masjid till you sleep these 7 8 hours of the day that are left see how many sins you you have committed how many times you have gone on your phone and deliberately had committed sins by watching what you what you were not supposed to watch right who can tell me brothers the commandment of allah in quran when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said do not watch haram who can tell me in which surah this commandment do not watch haram in which juz of quran allah said do not watch haram anybody ha eh? okay that is also wala taqrab zina don't go near zina yes in surah an nur 18th juz a clear cut forceful commandment from allah said wa qul lil mu'minin yaghuddu bin absarihim right wa yahfazu furujahum nal hadha zalika askalahum inna allaha khabirun bima yasnaun allah said qul lil mu'minin now brothers underline this please qul lil mu'minin allah is addressing mu'minin mu'minin you know who mu'minin are not muslims muslims are of general category anybody who says la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah is a muslim but among muslims the elite people the elite people are called mu'minin and who are the elite people who really seriously follow allah and rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam i mean that iman is rock solid right they are mu'minin so note here allah is saying qul lil mu'minin o the the strong believers the true believers right allah i am addressing you qul lil mu'minin yaghuddu min absarihim control your eyes 
Control your eyes. Make sure you are not watching something which is haram. Control your eyes. Only then you will be able to uh, protect yourself from committing adultery. And ذَلِكَ أَسْكَى لَهُمْ This is a clean life to live. Controlling your eyes will make yourself clean. So your life will not be dirty, filthy. But if you are controlling your eyes, right, you have a clean. ذَلِكَ أَسْكَى لَهُمْ أَسْكَى is like taskiya, clean. إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا يَصْنَعُونَ Remember, Allah knows exactly what you are doing when you are alone. When you are alone. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in one hadith have said, the meaning of that is that when a person is alone, nobody is watching. A person is alone. And in that loneliness, that seclusion, he had an opportunity to commit sins. Right? Yet, he refuses to, to commit sin. That person is a mu'min. That person is a mu'min. Do, do, do you understand? You are alone, secluded. Let's say you have your bedroom closed, shut. Nobody is watching. So you are alone, you are alone, secluded. Whatever you will do there, nobody will see you except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no human being have access to what you are doing. Yet you chose not to commit sin. This is a sign that you are a mu'min. You are not just a general Muslim, a common Muslim. No, you belong to that elite group of people called mu'mineen. So when it comes to taqwa, brothers and sisters, eyes. Eyes play such an important part. That's where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed mu'mineen. That oh, those who are the true believers, don't lose your class of being elite by misu- misusing your eyes. Right? Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you and me to be his friend. Waliyullah. And you can become a waliyullah when you have alladheena amanu wa kanu yattaqoon. If you have Iman and you have the fear of Allah's punishment. Now my dear, dear brothers and sisters, remember the, quickly the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes in different ways. But I'll just mention to you two forms of punishment. One form Get education. So, 
that Ummah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right now in most of the countries right are not is not literate right or that literacy rate is not up to the international standard so to if you we make up purpose of life then i am going to sponsor 10 kids for four years five years right i'm i'm going to, to do this if allah gives me more i'm going to sponsor more kids i want my my countrymen back home to be educated so that they don't they just stand on their feet right in this corona virus so many men women children died right and that home you know thousands and thousands of men died and they were the breadwinner they were the breadwinner now their children their family is in a bad condition and many of those children right who had lost their father now they don't have money to pay fees for to, to go to school and college Right. And the thousand thousand of such people are are there. Now, if you have a noble purpose in your life, what you will do is that you say, "Fine, I am going to sponsor these many children. Right? I am going to sponsor these many children." Brothers and sisters, this is what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is teaching us. This taqwa, this is taqwa. This is a part of taqwa that you are living for others. Right. But after the bad bad right, what did Rasulullah do when the prisoners came in Madina? What did the prisoners said that Oh Muhammad, we don't have money. We we cannot bail ourselves out. Yes, we made we made a mistake. We should not have come to attack Madina for our fault. But if you not let us go, we don't have money. We are poor people. And our family in Mecca, they cannot come here to bail us out because they don't. They also don't have money. We are poor people. So Rasul Salam said, "Okay, can you read and write? Yes, we are literate people. We can read and write. We are fine." Rasul Salam turned to the children of Madina. Look at this. Rasul Salam turned to the children of Madina. Rasul Salam said, "Okay, these ten children, they are your students." Okay, children, go to this uncle. This uncle will teach you how to do read and write. And the Rasulullah said, if when these children are able to read and write, you have you have met your goal, you are free. You can go back to the mother. And these seven, eight children come here. This uncle will teach you how to read and write. When these children will learn from you, you are free. Brothers and sisters, this is how Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used the resources to teach people how to read and write. Right? Just like when in the first, the first uh, ayah of Quran, the Quran, right? The Quran means to learn. To read means to learn. This is the, this is like the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The word Qari, Qari has a completely different meaning at the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As it is right now, here when we say Kalisa, Kalisa means that this person learns and knows how to recite Quran beautifully. So we call him Kalisa, Kali. Well, at that time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the word Kali had completely different meaning. Kali meant this person who can read. Kala ya can read, meaning he is the most knowledgeable person. So when it says Iqra read. Remember, there was nothing in front of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Rasulullah had to read. If I I should read, you say, "I'm just read more." I mean, there has to be something on your phone or a piece of paper or a book that you have to read. So when the read came and he heard Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, "Ikhlaq, Bismillah, Bismillah, Bismillah." Read in the name of your Rabb, who is the Great. So there was no paper, there was no book, right? What it meant was learn, learn. Gain knowledge and start gaining knowledge with the name of Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. That's why the Sunnah of the Ma and the Qari. As I said to you, read. I cannot read and write. But what I'm saying is, Iqra means gain knowledge, earn knowledge, right? 
So when we talk about ittaqullah, fear Allah, my dear brothers and sisters, it means also that we should learn to live for others, help others. Right? And in conclusion, brothers and sisters, I would like to remind you of the second one, the second part of this ayah, and that is Wakulu Kaulat Sadiqa. Taqwa cannot be earned if you are alive. <coughs> Taqwa cannot be inculcated without being truthful. If you want to have taqwa, you must learn not to lie. So the Bakulu Kaulat Sadiqa. And the word Allah has used is Sadida. Sadida means firm. Sadid means something which is rock solid, firm. So that is whenever you speak, speak what is true and what is firm. Allah, that is taqwa. Meaning your word should be such that the world should accept. He is a Muslim, but when he says, he, 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 he never lies. He never lies. Right now it has become completely reversed. If you are a Muslim, chances are that he is a liar. Is it? Chances are he is a liar. Right. One brother was telling me that he is in this business of export and port. He was telling me that when he is LC, he is an LC, right? So he said that when there is a Muslim uh, country bank, any Muslim country bank, in our field, it is not accepted. That LC is not accepted. Then it has to be a European bank or an American bank. Bank of America, Chase Bank, that are of credit, it is accepted all over. You have a Saudi Arabian bank, an Egyptian, Egyptian bank, a Pakistani bank, whatever, it's not accepted. Why? Ulu Kaulat Sanida. Again, I'll repeat. You pray Salah, but we all lie. We all lie. And if you witness this, I witness it all the time. That somebody makes an appointment with me or with anybody, that Imam said, I'll come for a divorce case, a car case, a counseling, or whatever. Right? At this time, the Imam Sahib is sitting here, that guy comes for up half an hour. Yeah, I'm coming, I'm on my way. That's not Ulu Kaulat Sadiqa. I don't think we, when a non Muslim makes a, 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 a promise, a, an appointment, most chances are that he'll be there. So, brothers, taqwa is all about fearing the punishment of Allah. And Bakulu Kaulat Sadiqa, when you speak, speak firmly. Meaning, speak the truth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you in the end of that.